Thank you, Kate, for that very kind introduction. I think Kate and I are probably the only people in the room who have both read and enjoyed a John Ford slasher play written about 1612, which is sort of puts most uh, modern horror movies to shame. I, it was the subject of our first discussion. Um, so thank you, Kate. And thank you for the important job you do in advocating for New York City, uh, city's cultural institutions. Thank you also to Randy Borscheid and the Alliance for the Arts for the invitation to participate in this excellent series of arts forums here at the New York Times. I like the idea that this evening's session is uh, being billed as a discussion, so I'm going to speak about the Met uh, briefly and then I'll spend the bulk of the, the session uh, op opening the, the floor to, to questions. I'm not going to dwell on what a difficult year this has been, obviously. Suffice it to say, we've had to make some difficult decisions in the face of a 25% decline in our endowment and a dip in all our revenue streams. But I think we're now um, all at the Metropolitan embracing a new sense of momentum and I'm very pleased to say that the conversations in my office have shifted back from, a, you know, we can't do this and we can't do that, to really focusing on what we can do in a very positive sense. Everyone continuously asks me, what am I going to change? What I won't change is what I've loved about the museum uh, ever since I arrived 15 years ago, uh, the attraction that drew me here as a young curator the sense of excitement, the dynamic programming, the, the commitment to scholarship, the sense really that at the Met, anything could happen. That said, crisis uh, often has the silver lining of forcing institutions to be more creative about themselves and to look at their own resources to, and how they achieve their goals. Luckily at the Met, those resources our extraordinary staff and our own collections are something of an embarrassment of riches. So yes, of course there will be changes, but let's say it will be evolution rather than revolution. Let me talk about, first about, uh, about exhibitions and, the, and their relationship to the permanent collections. One of the things I've... Uh, discussed on a number of occasions uh, is the question, the issue, the issue of scaling back on the number of exhibitions that uh, we have been mounting. Uh, the, the changing canvas of banners on the facade of the, muse of the museum has become a, a, a frequent, a, a familiar sight to New Yorkers. And in recent years, we've been doing uh, as many as 35 to 40 exhibitions and installations each year putting huge resources into that side of our operations. While I certainly want to maintain and absolutely am committed to maintaining a challenging exhibition program, I also want to bring some of that creativity, that energy, back to our own collections, two million objects, rediscover our permanent holdings, and re-examine our, our ideas of what exhibitions can be that's a shift I would have been thinking about irrespective of the economic circumstances, but uh, the current client, climate makes it a necessity. We've been mounting so many loan shows that even our loyal visitors only see a portion of them. And we often overlook the fact that every day, two thirds of our visitors come through our doors for the first time in their lives. The danger is that we are only competing with ourselves for our own audience. So I think we're going to, as we go forward, we are going to be looking hard at the balance of loan shows to uh, more creative engagement with our own collections. And this is the extraordinary thing about the Metropolitan. You know, just to take a, a single topic, say jewellery, our collections embrace everything from ancient Greece, Rome, Byzantium, Egypt, Africa, and America, alongside modern design, historical designs, and European paintings, 
and so on, recording. I mean, it just this one theme reflects the breadth of our holdings and the extent to which I think it's time for the museum as a whole to uh, look creatively across departmental boundaries. One area in which this has already been done, just to give you one case in point, an exhibition that's now in formulation, is going to be looking at the, the trade and the artistry of export textiles from Asia through to Europe and through to America. Here I show you uh, 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 an Indian cotton, 18th century Indian cotton, and here uh, an American 18th century gown made of Chinese export silk. Uh, so we'll, you know, this, is a, this is a show that would draw on the strengths across Costume Institute, uh, European Decorative Arts, our Asian Art Department, and our American department. This kind of extensive collaboration is something that could only happen at the Met, where the encyclopedic nature of our holdings allows for cross-fertilization that should be the lifeblood of our work. Just to give you an example of ne from next year, uh, we'll be doing a, a major Picasso show drawn solely from our own holdings, and again drawing from two or three different departments, this will include 34 paintings, 58 drawings, a dozen sculptures and ceramics, and a selection of some 50 prints from a total of 400, all acquired by the museum over the last 60 years. Importantly, the exhibition includes many works on paper by Picasso that have rarely, if ever, been exhibited before. Here we see some of the, uh, the iconic images from his early period, uh, some of the, the Cubist uh, drawings just referred to, and one of the, uh, the, the sculptures. I think we will also an see an increase in the number of small dossier shows, highlighting particular aspects of our own collection in greater detail. For example, this past fall, Vermeer's masterpiece, The Milkmaid, came to the Met on loan from the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam, and we developed a small show around it, that included all five of the Met's paintings by Vermeer, as well as a select group of works by Dutch artists, placing Vermeer's superb picture in its historical context. Here we have the, the maid with the jug uh, from Mar the Marquand collection. Another example. Just last month, we opened an exhibition called Velasquez Rediscovered, featuring a painting from our own collection that was formally ascribed to the workshop of Velasquez and recently reattributed to the master himself following its cleaning and restoration. We were able to develop an exhibition around this discovery by showing the painting alongside other works from our own collection by, of Velasquez, thereby allowing the visitors to explore this exciting attribution for themselves and really to have a greater understanding of the, the scholarship and the conservation work that is going on at the Metropolitan on a, on a, on a daily basis. Of course, this is a, 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 por a study, a workshop study for the portrait that appears at the right-hand side of, of Velasquez's famous Surrender of Breda at the Prado. And there's much discussion now as to whether this is in fact a self-portrait by Velasquez. Of course, these exhibitions, I must emphasize this, these will re remain part of a whole with the more ambitious loan shows. I mean, I came as a curator to the Metropolitan because I thought that was where I could do great tapestry shows. And I remain firmly committed to, the, to, to uh, maintaining a, a challenging program in the coming years. And indeed, I'm working with our curators through scheduling through 2013, 2014 on a whole variety of exhibitions. I just remind you that at the moment, uh, one of these long-planned shows, you know, the